This is the story of time. Out of the vast system of the universe, out of the movement of star and planet, of sun and moon, out of mystery and faith and need, before the axe and the arrowhead, before the dawn of civilization, man became aware of time became aware of the order in his universe. And so he sought to measure time. By star and sun, by light and shade. And of the forces of nature, the sun was mightiest of all. And to the sun that warmed and comforted him, the sun that brought his crops to life-giving fruition, to the sun that measured his days with its birth, death and resurrection, to the wondrous sun, the magic sun, the life-giving sun, man performed magic rites. And out of star law and shadow reckoning were born the arts of writing, architecture, numbering and geometry. First by the height and position of the sun, then by the shadow of a pole falling across a half circle of stones, invisible time was visibly measured. And the Egyptian obelisk measured the hour and progress of time. Out of a pillar of stone and a blanket of sand, the first sundial was made. The obelisk a stylus, the desert its face. And thus time lay in the palm of Egypt, measuring man's day and his labor. Time had become an instrument of man. But the sundial was only half a clock, measured only the sunlit hours, was conquered by cloud and storm and night. But man's need to measure the passage of time in night as well as day, proved greater than his obstacles. And with tallow and string, the problem was solved. In place of the sun, fire and flame to burn the weighted strings, and sound the hours of passing night. Thus by day, the sundial, and by night, the clock of fire. Sun, shadow, fire, now water. Its flow, even and constant, was used to measure the hours of day and night. The water clock was born, the great clepsydra of Harun al-Rashid produced by the combined art and science of silversmith, goldsmith, jeweler and craftsman. Time was captured, released and measured. The hour, the day, the full cycle of the year. And now, the sands of time were used to measure the hour of time, the minute, the second. Now, with a bar and cog and weight of iron, the clock was born.
And in the Cathedral of Pisa, Galileo observed a swinging lamp to discover the principle of the pendulum. And then applied it to the measurement of time. The invention of the anchor escapement. Discovery upon discovery called for greater accuracy in the cutting of clock wheels to catch the swift seconds of time. And the work of men's minds, of Tezibus, Walter, Regiomontanus, of Copernicus, Galileo, Hooke, of Frisius and Huygens, of men known and unknown, the search of ages, the scanning of skies, the use of sun and shadow, fire and water and sand, and now of metal, and now in the Middle Ages, the birth of the mechanical clock. Now came the artist and woodworker, the engraver and jeweler to adorn the clocks. Inlays of gold and silver and figures symbolic of man and of time, of fashion, of manner. and of morality. On the hour, every hour, with humor and wit. But the growing science of navigation, the seeking for new worlds, for new sea lanes to new empires, demanded accuracy above adornment. Accuracy to the second in time and place. The spring clock sought to measure time within their coils. And in the year 1714, a problem by the British government. To determine a ship's longitude to an accuracy of one degree at the end of a six weeks voyage, the reward 20,000 pounds. And the Harrison chronometer won. Born of a man's whole life and effort, born of a Yorkshire carpenter, John Harrison. After a test of five months, its total error only 54 seconds. Now the dream was a self-winding watch, and Perelet the Elder developed one using the pedometer principle. A hammer inside the case jerked to and fro as the wearer walked, thus winding the mainspring. But the watch was not accurate, failed as other perpetual watches were to fail. Until in the 20th century, Hans Wilsdorf developed the first watch with a perfectly waterproof case. And to the delicate mechanism, now protected from dust, dirt and humidity, he added the rotor self-winding mechanism. And man at last possessed a watch, accurate, waterproof and self-winding. And this is the story of time. This is the story of man's progress in time measurement. This is the story of how man learned from the movement of star and planet, of sun and moon, to measure time, and how he captured the ordered harmony of the heavens and confined it within the sensitive strength of the modern watch.